of Chicago. This is from last weekend's trip for for uh, Lane Norton's VIP Muscle Camp, which was uh, hosted at uh, Becky Dalstrup's Becky Dalstrup's gym and um, uh, in a suburb of Chicago. Actually, it was a, a wonderful weekend. Got to see some snow, and what do Floridians do when it snows? We shoot some video of it, of course. That's Will Grazion, another St. Petersburg Floridian native, and uh, he was calling his daughter to show her some snow on camera. There's Dr. Lenicky being his usual funny self. That was Peter Fitchin in the uh, with the shaved head there. There's uh, one of the uh, campers. So we had a wonderful crew go up to Chicago. The, the purpose of this video is I'm going to discuss um, blood flow restrictions. So the man sitting there on the left of the video is Dr. Jeremy Lenicky out of Oklahoma who now works uh, at Ole Miss. And he's been doing research on blood flow restriction for many years and uh, the benefits of it. Um, a lot of the questions that come up with regards to blood flow restriction is should I be doing it? Um, is it necessary? Is it safe? Uh, first things first, it's very safe. Um, Jeremy has done thousands of trials with um, blood flow restriction. Um, second of all, should you be doing it? I consider it a tool in the toolbox. If you're healthy and you're able to train heavy and you're able to train to failure, then it's not necessary. Where it comes in handy is because you're using such a low load and you're still getting the benefits of hypertrophy because of the, um, the restriction and the metabolites being trapped in the muscle while it is restricted, preventing the venous return. Um, it does have a purpose. Um, definitely when you're injured, when you have achy joints, or even if you're just short on time. So I consider it a tool in the toolbox for getting in the gym and getting work done. Um, Lane and I have found it very useful while doing DUP or powerlifting training due to the time that those workouts can consume. Um, here you see Lane, this was uh, in the morning, going over the, uh, the deadlift form um, as a part of our camp. You know, it's not, we don't just bring the camp um, together and just put them through workouts and make them sore. We try to teach them some basics that they can take back with them and invariably at every camp somebody or several people hit PRs and squat, deadlift and bench. Um, so I just tried to get some footage while I was there. It's kind of hard to get footage while you're coaching. This is uh, Ashley Hoffman um, deadlifting 305. Later in the day she actually did this 305 for 30, 30 reps um, during her AMRAP set. Um, so as you can see I don't even lift. Um, but back to blood flow, the, the, the benefit of the blood flow restriction, um, there is no doubt that it works. There is no doubt there's benefit to it. Um, I think there's a lot of confusion on how tight to wrap. Um, Jeremy's actually doing a lot of research right now on how tight to wrap. So if complete restriction would be a 10, um, the consensus is right around a 7. Um, and so if you're in that range, you're going to get the benefits. Here's Katie Rutherford deadlifting. This was actually my uh, one of my Instagram videos this week. Uh, Katie is another girl who just lifts like a beast. You know, she's great to hang out with. Uh, this is a martial art I learned from Japan. Ready? Fuck! <laughs> I missed. I missed. Did you just punch her? Bit? All right, guys. I'm here with Dr. Jeremy Ledeke, uh, University of Texas, formerly of Oklahoma. Uh, team Norton for life. That's right. And uh, Jeremy's done a lot of research on the benefits of muscle hypertrophy while including blood flow or blood flow restricting. Um, so, for the people that are interested in the benefits that it can provide for actually muscle hypertrophy, why don't you explain to me the protocol that you see in your research I showed you? I don't know what, you know, well, the protocol that we always use is typically 30 reps, you know, 3 sets of 15, with about 30 seconds rest in between. Uh, you might not always get close to those reps, but it's a, it's a pretty good goal to try to shoot for. Um, if you're not getting close to those reps, then the reps are probably way too tight or the load is too high. So the load that we're going to use today is, you know, extremely light for Paul, but just for demo, it should work fine. So let's go ahead and put the reps on. So it needs to be tight enough to just cause a little bit of restriction. Um, so tighter is not necessarily better. So there's, there's probably a wide, a little bit of a range where the effectiveness is going to be pretty much the same. 
just needs to be moderate restriction. At the very on top of the shoulder? Yeah, here, the shoulder the right here. So we're gonna yeah. So we're gonna do. Uh, this is a super set. Yeah. This is a, this is a super set the yeah. So we'll just jump from one machine to the next. So 30, 30, okay. 15, 15, etc. Okay. So we're gonna use a very low load. So this is 20 to 30 percent of what would be right. something that you can run back. Right. Right. Probably around 30 percent is probably better for most of you guys. But we'll go light today, so we do want to do bicep push or tricep. Do bicep push. Oh. So do 30. Okay, so instead of boring you with watching me do all my sets, I'm just going to explain it to you briefly here. So the first set for each body part, so for biceps, you do 30 reps, keeping the wraps on the whole time. Um, now, if you're only doing one body part, then you can then rest 30 seconds. But we were supersetting. Um, so what we did was 30 reps on biceps, 30 reps on triceps. And then you just go back to the first movement and do 15 reps and you'll do so the protocol will be 30, 15, 15, 15, and then when you're done, you remove the wraps. So Jeremy here is just watching me. Um, now with, with uh, how much weight do you want to use? The purpose of this is not to lift heavy. If you want to lift heavy, just lift heavy, don't use wraps. The purpose here is to get blood into the muscle and not allow it to leave. So you're allowing arterial blood flow and preventing the venous return. So the load that I was using, 10 pound dumbbell curls, and I want to say, you know, 80 or 90 pound tricep extensions, obviously is not much um, resistance for me, but I was, by the end, I was definitely feeling it. And I got to tell you, I had some severe uh, delayed onset muscle soreness or DOMS um, about two days later. And um, I train arms three days a week right now. So this was the only variance of my training. So there was some soreness associated with it. Um, now soreness isn't always associated with muscle growth, but it's not a bad thing, especially, you know, when you've been training for 20 years, it's always fun to, fun to find new things that, um, that get you going and make you, you know, feel a little sore. So I'll let Jeremy do a little bit of explaining. Um, so again, just work on, you know, if you're a trained person, 30% of your one rep max, and it's going to sound ridiculously light, but just try it. All right, so the protocol we did was two muscles at the same time. Right. So which was 30 reps and then 15 back to back. But if you only wanted to do one, how long reps for the next set? 30 seconds. So if we were doing just biceps, we'd do 30 reps, rest 30 seconds, then do the 15, rest 30, 15, rest 30. 15. You guys have any questions? Do not email this man directly to me. If I don't know, I'll ask him. It's safe.